Dirtle Magic. Hello and welcome back. You can follow our post on Twitter and Facebook at DirtleMTG to stay up to date on our latest videos and other posts, and you can join a more robust discussion about Casual Commander at our blog, thedicebag.blog. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this content to help the channel and the blog grow. Another way you can support the channel, though, is through our affiliate links in the description below. If you're looking for single sealed product or gaming accessories to protect all of that glory, please consider clicking the links into the description. Now, grab some spells, it's time to dirtle. Hello and welcome back to Dirtle Magic. Today we're going to try some Ludovic and Ulog. Looking at our opening hand, that's a lot of lands and... I mean, I guess we could keep it, but we want to get some discard our creatures going. Let's go ahead and mulligan. New hand. Three lands. I think we can make this work. Let's go ahead and keep it. Our commander on the front side is blue-black for legendary 2-3 human wizard. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks a mill a card, X blue blue black black exile X cards from your graveyard. Transform this. X can't be zero. Activate only as a sorcery. The backside is Ulog Ludovic's Hubris. 4-4. Four, four. As this creature transforms into Ulog Ludovic's Hubris, it becomes a copy of a creature card exiled with it, except its name is Ulog. It's a 4-4, four, four, and it's a legendary blue and black zombie, in addition to its art colors and types. Play number of 1-1 one, one cards on equal to the number of creatures cards exiled with it. Our first punt, Crack the Verdant Catacombs, and Dotha Triumph into play. It is Carador Ghost Chieftain. 5 white, black, green for legendary 3-4 centaur spirit. This spell costs 1 less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard, and during each of your turns, you may cast a creature spell from your graveyard. Our second punt, Vivid Creek into play with two counters, is Jaleva Nephalia Scourge. One blue, black, red for a legendary 1-3 vampire wizard. Flying, when she enters the battlefield, each player exiles the top X cards of the library, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast this card. Whenever she attacks, you may cast an instant sorcery spell from among the cards exiled with this without paying its mana cost. And our last opponent, with a forest into play, is the Gitrog Monster. Three black green for legendary 6-6 frog horror death touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this unless you sacrifice a land. You may play an additional land on each of your turns, and whenever one or more lands are put into your graveyard from anywhere, draw a card. Can be very combo-tastic, don't look too much forward to it. On our turn, we get Sunken Ruins and we're last, which is sad. Let's do Frost Marsh and pass it off. Two Caridor's turn, we have a Farseek. Godless Shrine into play. Two Jaleva's turn, Forbidding Ruins into play. A Signet possibly coming down? Oh, nope, just tapping it down, passing it off. Gitrog Monster with Demonic Tutor. Eh, probably setting up for a combo. What is the combo of this one? Uh, I don't know. I remember it being some older black card. I know I have a copy physically somewhere. I just don't remember for the life of me what it is. To our turn, we get the Ring of Zatharid. Could be good later. Let's go Sunken Ruins and filter for our commander. And we cast Ludovic to the battlefield. We get to mill one card. It's Myriad Landscape. Let's pass it off. So you will notice in our hand we do have a Blighted Agent. The deck's not built around Infect, but there are some Infect creatures in the deck. Figure if we can get it to be a two-hit kill commander, we're golden. Carador with a Dothi Voidwalker into play. Yeah, that immediately needs to die, because we need to be exiling stuff. And Scavenging Ooze. Lots of graveyard hate from the graveyard deck. I find that somewhat ironic. So we do need something to exile. Unfortunately, we are a little short on the exiling effects in the deck. Goblin Electromancer coming down for Jaleva. Interesting. I'm hoping that doesn't just depend on their commander. I've run to a lot of Jaleva decks and they like never seem to get off. Like get going at all. So I'm hoping this one does better. We have Crucible of Worlds coming down for the Gitrog monster. Yeah, that'll be handy. Wasteland into play otherwise, so we will have to look out for that. Mox Diamond coming down. Okay. So I imagine they'll discard a land, then play it. Alright, so they don't. That's interesting. I thought they might have. Maybe they're just running short on lands. To our turn, we get Mortuary Mire. That'll be great if we ever get something to take care of those guys over there. Let's go Island. And then let's filter some Black Man for a Demonic Embrace. Then we'll go to Attacks. We'll attack into Carador because, frankly, our deck just isn't going to work very well if they're alive. And we mill one card, and it gets exiled. It does unfortunately feed the swarm. They take five, up to five commander, down to 34. Let's pass it off. It's damn, they're destroying our creature. Sad face, let's put it back in the command zone, otherwise it stays in exile. And I imagine they'll swing at us. Oh, they're not. Okay, so one at us, the ooze. 
the Voidwalker is going into Jaleva. The Ooze has been activated. They're getting rid of Demonic 2 from Gitrog. At least it's not getting a counter. And the Exile our land. So my problem right now is we need to get rid of Carador so we can use our deck. But the Gitrog monster is setting up fairly well, and I'm afraid that nobody else is really seeing that at the moment. But we'll see how things go. Jaleva's turn sees Nivix Guildmage come down. So they can copy this sorcery spell they control. They can also draw and then discard a card. Oh, and the Gitrog leaves the game. Sad face. Yeah, uh, the Carador probably shutting them down pretty hard. Jaleva tapping down the rest of their mana. Let's see if they go anywhere on the combat. They do not. Rolling on over to us. Could do Night Veil Predator. At least it has flying, death touch, and X proof. Which is great for our Semitron-ish kind of build we're doing here. Unfortunately, we are not in a position to really play either of our tapped lands right now. So let's just go ahead and do the Mystic Sanctuary. We are a bit creature heavy. Get that out of the way. And then we'll play our Obsessive Stitcher, I think. At least it's a blocker. This one's really more for the kind of self-discard kind of thing, and a little bit of that recursion. Uh, the 0-3 body really doesn't help us at all. We'll pass it off. Over to Carador. Let's see what kind of graveyard hate they'll sh throw at us this time. They have no creatures yet in the graveyard, which is fine with me so far. Land and play three cards in hand otherwise. Let's see where they go to attack. I imagine us with the du yeah, the Voidwalker, so we can't block it. We'll take three, down to 35. There we go, second main. They are summoning something. It's Spike Weaver. That's not something I've seen in a while. Uh, what is this, the Fog one? Yeah, this is the Fog one. That's uh, going to be annoying. So it looks like it's just kind of like a uh, hate on everything kind of deck. Haven't really seen that out of Carador in a long time, so at least it's somewhat interesting, if frustrating. Over to Jaleva. It's Jaleva Nefalia Scourge coming down. So more exiling against us. Let's see what they get from it, though. Mm, you know, I'd be fine with a board wipe, but it'd have to be... I mean, it would have to be like Merciless Eviction off Carador itself, or something like that, to get rid of those creatures forever. So let's see what they got. Factor Fiction, Sudden Spoiling, I bet that's from Carador, because I'm pretty sure we don't run it. And Echoing Truth. So that's from us, I wager. I do like Echoing Truth, I use it in a lot of decks. To our turn, we get a Swamp. Uh, let's do the Mortuary Mire, though. Just get that going. And then let's go ahead and get down the Night Veil Predator. Find Death Touch and Hexproof. Let's see how that goes for us. And we'll go ahead and pass it off there. Carador, no combats, no new land into play. Three cards in hand over to Jaleva. And there's the first trigger for Jaleva this game. Let's see what they do with it. It's Factor Fiction. We get to separate. Let's uh, really make them work for that Swarm Intelligence. Swarm Intelligence gets out of hand very, very quickly. Alright, yeah, so they kept the other four cards, so I'll have to discard a few. Not too big of a deal. It is attacking into the Carador player. That's fine. Yeah, they take the one down to 33, up to one commander damage from Jaleva. It will only show the five from us, though, until they surpass it. Although, hopefully, we'll be hitting them for a bunch of damage sooner rather than later. Second main, Evolving Wilds into play, getting the crack. Swamp looks good. And there it is. Jaleva just discarding and drawing a card. We get Burnished Heart, sure. Let's play Swamp. Get down the Burnished Heart. Might as well grab some more lands out of the deck and prepare ourselves for eventual something. Still need some removal, though. That is getting a bit on my nerves. Oh, looks like Jaleva has some counter magic there. Just tapping down some lands all threatening like. Not cool, man. It's just a Burnished Heart. And we'll just pass it off there. Dothy Voidwalker gets cracked at the end of our turn. Let's see, they have Feed the Swarm and Demonic Embrace. Demonic Embrace might be good for them. Oh, okay, they also had Factor Fiction. You're right, they had some other stuff over here too. Okay, so I guess they just want to draw some cards. Commit. Put Target Spawn on permanent on his library second room on the top. So they get back their own spell. Yeah, Commit to Memory is pretty good. I also really like Refuse to Cooperate, but it's just a lot harder to use. Scavenging Ooze does some exiling. We have an attack from Carador, both off into Jaleva so far. All right, let's see if they want to block it all. I doubt that they will. Uh, if they kill anything, Carador just gets a cost reduction, so... Yeah, they just take it down to 32 on Jaleva's side. And that's it for Carador. We have a suspension counter coming off, whatever that is. Never could pronounce that at all. 
Fasisis? Fasisis? I didn't know. In your case, it destroys a non-black creature, I think? That will destroy a target creature. Its control loses life equal to its power plus its toughness. So, I mean, for suspension, that's fine, but seven mana. If it was instant at seven mana, that'd be really good. Well, not really good, but it'd be a lot better. Anyway, over to Jaleva's turn. They are just going to go to attacks, see what they can get out of it. They still have Echoing Truth and Sudden Spoiling. Let's see what they cast. Echoing Truth could be good, I suppose. At least it's a bounce spell. It's Sudden Spoiling. Okay, so that'll be five damage across the board. So they will go down to 28 on Carador's side. Second main phase, we got some mana tapping. Let's see what it will be. Six mana is pretty good. Blight Herder. Okay. When you cast this spell, you may put two cards your opponent's own from exile into their graveyards. If you do, create three Colorless Eldrazi. You know, I never thought I'd see those kinds of guys, the processors. That's pretty nifty. Is it Blue works into play? So, I do want to hit Jaleva for a little bit of damage on this next turn. We'll probably go in at them with the Night Veil Predator. Uh, I do hope we get a little bit of our pill for it. We got a little bit of it in the deck, a little bit of Rattlesnake stuff, but not too much. To our turn, we get Watery Grave. Uh, do we want that into play untapped? No, I think we're okay. Let's actually keep it in hand. Cast Demonic Embrace. We will have to choose a creature to enchant. We'll choose the Obsessive Stitcher. Pay the cost. And discard a card. Well, let's go to combat. I do want to leave one defender up. So one fire each into of our opponents for three each. And it's Spike Weaver. Prevail combat damage. And we'll pass it off there. Leave mana up for the burnished heart activation. Which hopefully won't be sudden spoiled away or split seconded away. Ooze exiling the sudden spoiling. That's fine. Also exiling our land. Sad phase. Don't think we have any real way to get it back, but... Still a thing to consider. And our Feed the Swarm. Over to Caridor's turn proper, we have Underrealm Lich. So this should allow them to get some creatures into the graveyard, I believe. Yeah, and that'll give them cost reduction on Caridor and start their deck getting going. Uh, yeah, we're still gonna need some removal. Even if we just hit a bog to get rid of that Void Walker will be very beneficial. Another time counter comes off the thing I can't pronounce. It'll go down to three counters. Jaleva's turn proper, seven cards in hand. Two creatures attacking at us. All right, let's go ahead and see where they're sending the Echoing Truth. We will probably block the four or five and sack the burn chart if we can. Otherwise, we're taking one from Jaleva anyway. It's going off our Stitcher Supplier. Yeah, that's fine. I kind of figured it'd be not the best choice to put Demonic Embrace on there, but I wanted to see if it would work out. Let's go to blocks. Ah, uh, we have Ooze getting rid of our enchantment sadness. Right, let's go ahead and block. And then we'll go ahead and sacrifice it. We'll get a swamp and an island. We take one up to one commander damage, down to 31. Second main phase for Jaleva. Plenty of stuff to do with it. Let's see what it is. Worst fears. You control target player during that player's next turn. Exile this. Oh boy. So they did target Carador at least. Yeah, things are getting a little out of hand. And we still need to get rid of that scavenging ooze to really get our deck going too. To our turn, we get Una, Queen of the Fae. You know what? Probably going to cast it anyway. If we can survive long enough to get a Ring of Zathrid on it for regeneration, at least it'll be semi-protected. So let's go buy an agent first and also try to bait out some counter magic. And then we'll go Una. Uh, probably should have kept our tapping lands down to a minimum there. A little bit telegraphing. And I guess we'll go ahead and swing at Jaleva. I don't necessarily want to gain their ire, but I also don't want them to be around all game. So a little extra damage here and there will help out. Damage is good there down to 29. Let's pass it off to Carador, not quite Carador's turn. End of turn, we have Factor Fiction now, Jaleva again. Let's see who they pick, it'll be us. Ooh, Rakdos Charm, one of my favorite cards. Don't know how good it would do here. Tarland, we definitely don't want. Propaganda would be terrible. Let's go like this. 
Try to bait them into that Rakdos charm. They get, you do get, give them Talrand as like a, a, a prize, I guess. But Mnemonic Deluge might be really bad once they get that Pythus in the graveyard or whatever it's called. It could be a game winning strategy. Yeah, they do take the one with Talrand. I kind of figured they would. Really wanted to bait them with that. Again, we're not getting any removal though, and that hurts. Now over to Not Carador's turn. Let's see what Jaleva's going to do with it. Scavenging Ooze activated to get rid of our burner start. Jaleva does have some stuff. Doubt they'll target themselves. I'm hoping they get rid of the Dilathi Voidwalker. There's also a Bane of Progress in the graveyard I would not like to see necessarily. It's Eternal Witness. I mean, maybe Dam? Jaleva's in a good place to use Dam. It is. So I'm thinking probably our Blight Agent, maybe Una. Una would be better against them generally, but people are in favor of Infect, so it's really hard to tell. Yeah, it's against Una. Man, never get to use it. I really wish he had cost like four mana or something, but this is a card from back in the day. Okay, all at us. Uh, yeah, we will not block. Let's just go ahead and take it. It looks like 10 to me. We are down to 22. My mistake, it was 9. Underrealm Witch gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. I believe there's some other cost, wasn't there? Yeah, pay 4 life. So they're down to 21. Oh, and they can pay at any number of times. They could just straight up kill Carador here. That is ridiculous. And Carador quits the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. Wow, this game went topsy-turvy. Although, at least it's entertaining. Unfortunately, that early Graveyard 8 just... Shut us down. We were going to go a little bit aggro with Gludovec and try to get some mill going, but mm, just got hard walled, man. Sometimes you get into a game and you are just countered. It happens. Jaleva's actual turn to mirror signet during the first main phase after a card drawn. Six cards in hand, otherwise. I believe they had Vivid Craig also come into play. It's Galvanoth, which is a card I always thought was fairly good in design. Just getting stuff to the top, being able to cast, has always been a little bit difficult. And there we have it, an attack. Let's go ahead, like, Blight Agent is better in the graveyard. So let's go ahead and block the Goblin Electromancer, make it a little bit weaker. It goes down, we go down to 16. Underground River, sure, let's go ahead and play it for our turn. And let's get down our commander again. We don't have a lot right now that we can do. So I'm just going to put up as many bodies as I can as blockers and just kind of see what's going to happen. Swamp into the graveyard. That's fine. Let's play Gravebreaker Lamia. Uh, I think I have some stuff with flashback. Let's go take a look. We could also get a backup infect creature. And Skitherix is one of the better ones. I think at this point, though, we just might need some fuel. Let's go Stinkweed Imp since it flies and can dredge. Let's pass it off there. Hope nothing happens to our face too badly, although I think we're a turn or two too late to really do anything. Jolova has a lot of mana, and they do kind of have the advantage creature-wise as well. So we can maybe buy a turn, but it really depends on what they have in their hand. Otherwise, we can flip Ludovic. Hope we get, like, a Swift Foot Boots for it or something. And turn it into a 4-4 Blight Agent, maybe a 6-6 Blighted Agent. Could be good, but I don't think we're getting out of this one. All right, there's the suspension again. I'm pretty sure it has still one counter left. And it does say destroy, so getting down the Ring of Zathraid might be good next turn. Terramorphic expands into play for Jaleva. And it gets the crack. Five cards in hand otherwise, 29 life. We are at 16 with two cards in hand. Uh, didn't hit any card draw either. Uh, the deck might be light on it, if I remember correctly. And there's the attack phase. Lots of mana up, still makes me a little bit nervous. Is just a 4-5. We could gain some life back here with a Grave Baker block. So I think that's what we're going to be doing. Because I do want to save face. If we can plus 4 instead of minus 4 right here and not get overwhelmed on the next turn, I think that will be fine. We go up to 20, lose the Lamia. Second main. Let's see what they're going to do. I imagine there'll be some kind of kill spell. No, it's Talrand. Yeah, that's why you need unblockability and flying on Ludovic. Just to get around stuff. Well, I guess more correctly, Ulog. Uh, let's go ahead and draw a card for the turn. It's Prognostic Sphinx. That'll be good for flying. Let's get down our Ring of Zathrid. 
and equip the ring to Ludovic. Hopefully they only have some destroy effects. Okay, we do need two mana up for the ring activation, possibly twice, uh, but we do need some blockers and summon the obsessive stitcher. And we'll pass it off there. Need to do one more turn. Get an extra counter on Ludovic though, that should be good. And since it counts as the same object, the counter should flip over onto Olog as well. It's Rakdos Charm. Destroy target artifact. Yeah, I guess we knew they had that. Let's go ahead and regenerate Ludovic anyway. Okay, I guess they'll kill our commander here. We'll put him back in the command zone. We don't have any recursion. In Garrick's Wake coming down too. Alright, well, I guess that's good game to our opponent. Okay, there they go. Yeah, guess we're gonna have to take a hard look at this deck. Unfortunately, I don't think there's really anything to protect our graveyard in blue and black. You know, besides countering abilities or such, but that is a lot of specific hate. We will take all the damage. And we go down only to three. Could have sworn that would be game, but all right. One more turn, but I don't think it's going to matter. Let's go ahead and just draw the card. And we get Raven form. Well, there's some removal. Uh, <laughs> pretty late into the game, though. Let's uh, do the Sphinx. And I guess we could Raven form onto something, but I don't think it really matters at this point. I do not like Tarlaran, though, so I guess we'll just do that out of, like, some weird spite. Mystical 2 in response, they get another Drake. They get Cruel Ultimatum off the top. That is pretty cruel. Man, you're already winning Why you got to do the things. Oh, well. Nothing we can do. And we get Cruel ultimatum And we go down. Sadness. Uh, I don't really know who I want to give it to. I think I'll let the computer decide. And their hand had, yeah, lots of removal and stuff to get to, you know, tutors. Yeah, unfortunately, we just, again, could not get going that game with the immediate graveyard hate. Because Ludovic mills on his own. And we do have some things like Grave Victor Lamia to put stuff in the graveyard. We also didn't see too much of our card draw. We did get some of our looting effects, but not many. There it is. Three for us, two for the winner, and one for Carador. Let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. See where we might need to make improvements. All right, here's the deck. Uh, yeah, we did not see too much card draw. And looking over the deck, I seem to have forgotten to put some in. So concentrated I was on making Ludovic flip into Ulog into a creature. So that is the focus of the deck. We're trying to make it, if you've seen my Brokos Infect decks, kind of a Tron-ish kind of style of deck where Ulog, we can semi-create something. Think like the Mimoplasm, but, well, frankly, not as effective. So we do have a lot of creatures that have evasion, even some of our other creatures that really serve other purposes, like the Ornithropter of Paradise. It'll give us flying. But while it's alive, it can give us mana like a mana rock. And because it's a creature more fragile, it can die, and then we can give Ulog flying. Ginger Brute in particular might be excellent at some point. We can also sacrifice it to get into the graveyard and it gives us a little bit more life gain. Night Veil Predator is something we saw. It just generally has Hexproof flying and Death Touch, so it makes it evasive and hard to kill. Wrinkled Master of Pranks. Again, flying gives it haste, and we can possibly manipulate the board state. Eradicator Valkyrie. Flying. Lifelink. Hexproof. So yeah, generally anything that had flying, anything that can make something unblockable or give it some kind of protection, generally made it into the lower end tiers of the deck here, the lower mana values. And that's the deck so far. I didn't want to go too far into it. I'm thinking maybe adding some more removal, definitely some more card draw, getting rid of the last two pill four cards and Silent Arbiter and Storm Tide Leviathan. We don't really have anything else going on right now and our creature count is pretty high. So definitely replacing those with some card draw I think will be beneficial. Anyway, if you saw any cards that you want to purchase for yourself in paper, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using the affiliate link in the description below. It helps out the channel and doesn't cost you anything extra. Thanks for sticking with the channel, as I had a lack of internet access and couldn't really do too much with it. Until the next game with Ludovic, stay safe out there.